Tonight, how black cats are not as scary as they may seem. What the City of Oswego's Police Department is gifting University Police. And why former Governor Andrew Cuomo is facing misdemeanor sex charges. WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Scott Brubaker. And I'm Hannah Limbo. Former Governor of New York Andrew Cuomo is under fire tonight as the subject of a misdemeanor complaint. The redacted report alleges that Cuomo committed a Class A misdemeanor of forcible touching. The report says he intentionally placed his hand under the victim's blouse and committed the misdemeanor in the governor's mansion in December of 2020. The victim said that she did not report the incident out of fear of losing her job, has now filed a complaint in Albany City Court. Cuomo has since been issued a criminal summons to appear in Albany City Court on November 17th. This is still a developing story. We will continue to bring you updates as the investigation progresses. As Cuomo's case continues to be investigated, Oswego City Police have identified the body found on Erie Street earlier this week from their initial investigation. The victim has been identified as 28-year-old Kayleen Fregel. While the investigation is ongoing, investigators are looking for information about a black colored sedan with silver rims, last seen on Liberty Street on Saturday evening. Anyone with any information regarding the case is encouraged to call the Oswego City Police Department at 315-342-8120. Mayor Billy Barlow announces that the Oswego City Police Department is donating used Axon body cameras to the SUNY Oswego Police Department. The donation will help assist with expanding the SUNY's UPD's uh, camera fleet. The cameras will be put into use in early 2022, while SUNY Oswego upgrades its body camera system. The mayor says that this donation will ensure the safety of all officers and members of, publics, of the public throughout Oswego. Oswego County Legislature Chairman James Weatherup plans to focus on businesses that need direct financial assistance, especially Oswego Health. Oswego Health is currently facing critical shortages of essential medical workers due to the pandemic's impact. In effect, Oswego County will now be receiving funding from the American Rescue Plan Act to improve the recruitment and retention of medical workers. In ordinance with new state guidelines, the Oswego Central School District will administer weekly screening tests for asymptomatic and unvaccinated students. Parents will receive an updated via the school's Parent Square site. Uh, as SUNY Oswego Central School District moves on with testing its students, more information has come out of regarding booster shots. Matthew Rivenberg uh, now joins us in the studio now. Matthew, why don't you tell us more information about these booster shots? Good evening, Scott and Hannah. I sat down with a student and Angie Brown from the Mary Walker Health Center to ask their thoughts on the COVID-19 vaccine. The CDC has approved COVID-19 booster shots. I sat down with Vega Hadretsky and asked her thoughts on the approval. Um, I think they're great. Um, Doctors and studies are showing them to be effective at helping people hold on to their antibodies. When asked if the COVID booster shot should be held on campus, Hadretsky says it would be convenient. In general, that it would be just very convenient for students to be able to get their booster shots if they need them. Angie Brown from Mary Walker Health Center spoke with me about how these boosters may impact various people in the community. Um, I think that the booster shot is a good option for people, especially people that work in healthcare. When asked if the campus will partner with someone to give out booster shots, Brown says it's in the works. I think that there is a potential that we may partner with um, outside agencies to provide booster shots, especially when they come become more readily available for our student population. Brown says these agencies are likely close to home, making partnership easiest. So if we're bringing in a big partner like Oswego County Health Department, it would probably be something large like 
in Sweatman Gym again or something like that. If it's something where we're just doing small little clinics, it may be held here. It may be held in the classroom, you know, located somewhere on campus. Brown says they have planned how clinics would look for the future. So they have a clinic every Wednesday um, over at their office at the health department. Brown says boosters are being rolled out to people. And it depends on their risk factors, their medical history, um, when they've been vaccinated. Reporting in Oswego, Matthew Rivenberg, WTOP 10 News. For more information on booster shots, go to health, health.oswego.com. OswegoCounty.com. New York schools have just announced that no Halloween costumes from the hit Netflix series Squid Games are to be worn to school. They claim that wearing Squid Game themed outfits will only promote violence as it will be deemed as inappropriate. Superintendent Dr. Craig Tice from Fayette Man uh, Manless School District has made guidelines to ban costumes with items that can be interpreted as weapons or outfits that come off as quote too gory. Governor Kathy Hochul signed a package of legislation today in an effort to combat gun violence and address the use of ghost guns in New York State. This sweeping legislation requires licensed gunsmiths and firearm dealers to register firearms in their possession. It also defines firearms disguised to resemble toys as a disguised gun. Additionally, it will prohibit possession of unfinished frames or receivers for everyone, not including licensed gunsmiths or firearm dealers. Our reporter Melanie Higgins spoke with experts at Lollipop Farm, the Humane Society of Greater Rochester, to debunk some common myths surrounding black cats. So like people say it's bad luck if a black cat crosses your path, but I'm like, I take that as a sign of good luck. Good luck or bad luck, superstitions surrounding black cats surface every Halloween. Though this year, Shay Shattuck and others are concerned for the cat's safety come Halloween time. Especially my mom is like very adamant, like don't let the cats out of the house, especially the black ones, especially like Halloween time. Those now posting online are urging others to keep their black cats indoors as to protect them. And you hear about like people driving, like go out of their way to like, hit a black cat. Shay says horror stories of black cats being harmed are all over the internet. And for Macy Cosmore, these stories hit closer to home. There was probably two years ago, maybe, in the area where I'm from, where someone took a black kitten and threw it out the door, out the car, at another moving car. Macy's own cat, Salem, is described by her as anything but bad luck. But stories like these make her fear for Salem's safety. Now, officials at Lollipop Farm say there is a lack of evidence proving black cats are being targeted, and they don't see lower adoption rates for them either. People love them. They really do, just as much as any other cat. Um, there are some myths that, you know, black cats may stay in the shelter for a long period of time. Um, we definitely don't see that. Professionals at Lollipop Farm are saying that the adoption rates for cats like this one boil down ultimately to preference. So age is definitely a big component. Um, cats who are older, um, they tend to have a longer length of stay. Nevertheless, Lollipop Farm says they have a very thorough adoption process and would ensure that their variety of pets are going to a good home Halloween time or not. I'm Melanie Higgins, WTOP 10. Lollipop Farm works closely with the SPCA to investigate animal cruelty cases. If you can suspect someone is abusing an animal, you can call their hotline at 585-223-6500. Coming up later tonight. We find out what Facebook is officially changing their name to. And Russia's capital is putting new COVID restrictions in place to contain the recent outbreak in Moscow. Now, let's take a quick look at the weather with Storm Team 10 meteorologist, Brittany Sparsino. Thank you, Scott. So today was absolutely gorgeous out. We saw the temperatures on the rise and it was absolutely sunny. But that is going to change as we move into this weekend. But we are going to be seeing those average temperatures until about Sunday or Monday. And the rain is yet again going to arrive for your Friday night and is going to linger throughout the weekend. What is the rain going to last for Halloween? I'll tell you my full forecast coming up after the break.
a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back from the break. I'm your Storm Team 10 meteorologist, Brittany Sparcino. Currently, we're looking at the fall foliage report across New York State. And in Oswego, we are at above peak and um, near peak as we move into central New York. And up in the Adirondacks region, they are past peak as we move into November. As we look at the current temperatures, we are a little bit below average as we're sitting in the mid to upper 40s. And they slowly decrease as you go west into, into western New York. And I want to talk about the rain that we are going to be seeing this weekend that can potentially be lingering into Halloween. When we go into Saturday, there is going to be a 54% chance of showers, and those showers are going to be heavy at times, and that is going to slowly um, move into Sunday. But if you are going trick-or-treating, the showers are going to be tapering off just in time for that. But I would still suggest bringing a light jacket and an umbrella with you in case those showers do continue to stay in our area. Looking at Friday, it is going to continue to be absolutely gorgeous. We're going to see mostly sunny skies with a high of 59 degrees, which is warm for this time of year. And if you are going to Oswego's Trunk or Treat on Saturday, I would yet again bring a rain jacket with you and an umbrella and the rain boots because we are going to be seeing that heavy to moderate rain. And it's going to be very windy at times. You're going to see wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour. And that's going to go into Sunday morning. But for Halloween, again, we are going to be seeing a chance of showers, but if you are going out, those showers are going to be gone and it's going to be cloudy for Halloween. And a look at your seven day forecast. Yet again, we are going to be seeing those sunny conditions for your Friday and we're going to see the rain move into Friday night into Saturday. And that is yet again going to be bringing those windy conditions and last for your Sunday morning. But as we move in the early next week, we are going to be seeing the sunshine return and have a cool down with those temperatures. Coming up after the break, more news and sports. You're watching WTOP 10 Nightly News. and a lot more sure of my abilities. At Oswego is where I really found myself and became the person I am. You work hard and you play hard. I love the environment of SUNY Oswego. her college years possible, opening that education savings account when she was little, spearheading campus tours, and deciphering financial aid. If you can ace planning for college, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org.
Good evening and happy Hello Weekend. I'm Carson Bruner and this is our new segment on Thursday Night News called What's Up Oswego? This is where I will be letting you know about fun events in Oswego each weekend. As you know, this weekend is Hello Weekend, which means that there are events happening all over town all weekend long. On-campus festivities are already being set to commence for the weekend, but some are unrelated to Halloween. SUNY Oswego will be hosting a publishing festival tomorrow in the Murano Campus Center Auditorium from 3 to 4.30 p.m., where three publishing experts will discuss helpful ways to publish creative writing pieces. You can also find more opportunities to intern tomorrow at 10 in the morning to 2 p.m. Extra help can be found by meeting Tina Cooper in Shinneman for her magic intern bus. Here, she will help students get on the right path to finding an internship. Halloween weekend festivities will continue throughout the city of Oswego by kicking off with a creepy crawl tonight through Saturday night. The event includes a haunted walk with decorations and characters along the river walk with face painting, a mechanical bowl, a rock climbing wall, and food and beverage vendors. Festivities will begin at 6 p.m. and will end at 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday night. You can find the event behind the Pontiac Hotel along the Riverwalk. The second annual Oswego City County Youth Bureau is hosting a trunk retreat from noon to 4 p.m. at the Oswego Speedway on Saturday. And if you're unable to leave campus, you can look forward to pumpkin painting in room 133 in the Murano Campus Center from 3.30 to 5 p.m. tomorrow. That's all I have for you tonight. I wish you a fun and safe Halloween weekend. Now, Hannah and Scott, back to you for some more nightly news. Thank you, Carson. Uh, Facebook is changing its company name to Meta. The new name is a reflection of the company's growing ambitions to go beyond social media. The name is inspired by the sci-fi term Metaverse to describe the company's vision for engaging in the virtual world. This, this rebranding comes after Francis Haugen, a former employee turned whistleblower, leaked a trove of internal company documents to lawmakers, news outlets, and, regulation, and regula regulators showing the company's awareness of the harm caused by their apps and services, but failed to rectify or address those issues. New York City firefighters are protesting over the city's vaccine mandate at the mayor's home. Mayor Bill de Blasio approved the vaccine mandate beginning on November 1st, forcing public employees to get the COVID vaccine or risk losing their job. City workers will have to show proof that they have received at least one dose of the vaccine by 5 p.m. on Friday. Up to 45% of the city's fire department could lose their jobs. Russia's capital is putting new COVID restrictions in place with a 10-day partial lockdown to contain the worsening outbreak. In Moscow, the measures are taking immediate effect in Russia sees daily highs in infections with over 1,000 deaths a day. The reintroduction of these restrictions is due to the Delta variant. Russia says that their most essential goal is to keep the country's economy running without a full lockdown. And coming up in sports, Pat Machado. Thanks, guys. Thursday night football, hockey, field hockey is back in action, and your weekend ahead. Coming up on after the break, WTOB 10 Sports. <laughs> What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. Is me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. 
Here at WTOP, we pride ourselves on delivering you all the news you need to know from the day's events. Whether it's happened on Capitol Hill or right here in Oswego, we make sure you know all about it. We keep you up to date on all your favorite, all your favorite Oswego and professional sports. And our Storm Team 10 meteorologists will make sure that you know exactly what weather you're up against when you start your day. Every Monday through Thursday night, make sure to tune in to Channel 10.2 because at WTOP, we don't just tell you the news. We are. We are. We are the news. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. Joy dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Now or during this highlight, it doesn't matter, it's up to you, but you can sit with them now, it's fine. Okay. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Patrick Machado with your sports update. Oswego State field hockey fell to the number 16 ranked Cortland Red Dragons. Cortland's Kira Etre opened the scoring just five minutes into the contest with her first goal on the year. Oswego's Leah Romanowski saved the goal on the line on a corner, but Lily Fox would get a penalty shot goal to notch her second before the half ended despite Laker pressure throughout. Final score, three to nothing. The Lakers move to eight and eight overall on the season and are already eliminated from Suniak contention. Men's hockey opens their regular season in the Deb tomorrow against the Hobart Statesmen. Hobart has been a thorn in the side of the Lakers in recent memory. Their last matchup was a four to one loss with the Statesmen ranked number fourth in the country to Oswego 6th, and they also ended their bid for a Frozen Four the season before. Travis Broman and Tyson Kirkby and the rest of the Lakers look to right the ship against the Statesman tomorrow at 7 p.m. Coverage on Hockey Night in Oswego begins at 6.30. The badly depleted Green Bay Packers are taking the Arizona Cardinals on in the opening matchup of Week 8. Aaron Rodgers is without receivers Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, and Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Kyler Murray and the red-hot Arizona offense are returning receiver DeAndre Hopkins in a bid to go 8-0 for the first time in franchise history, at home no less. The current score is 7-7 off of touchdowns by Arizona's Chase Edmond and Aaron Jones with a, with a goal line three-yard rush on third down. And amidst the excitement of baseball's biggest stage is MLB Commissioner's Rob Manfred's controversial comments regarding the Atlanta Braves' tomahawk chop gesture. He said, quote, the Native American community in that region is wholly supportive of the Braves program, including the chop. For me, that's the end of the story. This comes in the final season of the Cleveland Indians name. And critics are upset with his lack of awareness regarding the issue of indigenous prejudice as a whole. Now, game two against the Astros and the Braves. Bottom of the first, Travis Darnode hits one out to left field. Solo shot for him, and we're tied up at one. Now moving into the bottom of the second. Jose Siri, ground ball straight up the middle. The runner will score, and Siri is safe, which will give the Astros a 2-1 to one lead. And later in the bottom of the second, Martin Maldonado with a base hit out to left. One run will score. The relay throw comes to third, but there's no break there. It's going to go all the way to the backstop. Scoring is Jose Siri, and it's a 4-1 to one lead now. Hit out to left hit it out to right field, and Michael Brantley makes it five to one. Later in the fifth, Freddie Freeman with a line drive out to left to make it five to two Astros, but it would be no match for Houston as Jose Altuve 
with a solo shot right out to left. This game ends the same way that it started. A home run out to left, and the Houston Astros will now move to 1-1 one one on the series and tying it up, winning the game 7-2. to two. Well, thank you, Pat. So speaking of Halloween, what a better time than to talk this to talk about bones. You got that right, Scott. The pug of TikTok has spoken, and it is yet a bones day, which means today was supposed to be a good day. Weather, does this check out? Oh, absolutely. We saw above average temperatures today, and the sun was shining, and that is going to continue as we move into your Friday. Um, but the rain is again going to come back and we're going to see about a quarter inch of rain like we did the other day. But thankfully, um, it's going to go away by the time trigger treating comes around and just, you know, bring a light jacket or a long sleeve as the temperatures are going to cool down this weekend. Um, what sports looking like this weekend? Hockey night in Oswego. It's a big matchup over at the Deb, the wheelhouse, whatever you want to call it. Oswego State taking on the Hobart Statesman. And although, and although everyone wants to go back towards last season and pinpoint it as maybe the start of what would be the 1920 fall of the Oswego State Lakers and an all-senior squad that was expected to remain up there in the national rankings. But there's a little bit of sour memories from the year before um, with, the with the championship, with a chance to go to the championship here at the Murano Campus Center that they spoiled. It should be a fun one and the students will be loud, that's for sure. All right, thank you so much, Pat. That's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for OX5. Thank you so much for having us. Um, thank you for watching and have a great night, everyone. people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. Our son Arjun was born with cystic fibrosis. CF is a genetic disease that shortens lives. When the foundation was founded in 1955, children with CF rarely live long enough to attend kindergarten. Today, thanks to the foundation's groundbreaking research, advocacy, and care, some people with CF are attending college, getting married, and starting families. We've made amazing progress, but until a cure is found for all people with CF, we will not stop. Help us add tomorrows. Visit cff.org today. Is there a danger hiding in your home? Unused opioid medicines could harm your family. Find your unused opioid pills, patches, or syrups and learn how to dispose of them safely at fda.gov slash drug disposal.